Thank you very much, Dr. Kelich. Uh, on our program, Dr. Stefan Ujman was supposed to be speaking at this time, but he's just coming in, so we will, I hope I can ask your permission to allow him catch his breath. May we? Uh, thank you very much. And in that case, may I now invite Dr. Knowledge. Dr. Knowledge is Director of Science, Policy, and Capacity Building at UNESCO Sector, UNESCO. He oversees UNESCO programs in science policy and, and, he's a, and he's Executive Secretary of the International Basic Science Program. He is a member of the Polish Academy of Sciences. Dr. Nalish, may you tell us why UNESCO is partnering with MEG for this summit and for Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I know you are possibly quite disappointed because you were expecting a, a nice lady, Flavia Schlegel, here. <laughs> Well, even if I would pretend to be Flavia Schlegel, you wouldn't believe me, so. Uh, I, I'm really apologizing on behalf of Flavia, but uh, you know, uh, UNESCO is in a full swing of uh, catching up with the new development goals and 2030 agenda. We have now our executive board and today is very important meeting at which Flavia is uh, absolutely necessary. So she asked me to represent her, which I do with delight, uh, honor, and pleasure, especially that my division in the science sector, we have three divisions, uh, water, ecology, and basic engineering sciences and policy that I am heading, was the division that from the very beginning collaborated to make this summit a uh, reality. So, uh, let me start by first of all greeting Honorable Minister of Health of Uganda, Mrs. Sarah Opendi, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Godia, Ambassador of Kenya to UNESCO, UN Ambassadors and Heads of Missions to Geneva, Mr. Nicolas Mathieu, General Secretary of Swiss National Commission for UNESCO, Dr. Stephen Oshman, Chairman elect of Merck. And here I would uh, for a moment get out of the text and say that I would like first and foremost to thank very much Dr. Oshman, Merck, and Russia for making this meeting a reality. This is something we are all looking very much forward, which was necessary to organize, which is a beginning of a big adventure, and uh, I'm sure it will be something very important to all of us. UNESCO has a long tradition in this private-public partnership, and we are very keen in enlarging the group of companies with which we collaborate. We have agreements uh, with Intel, with Roche, with Roche we collaborate on World Library of Science. With L'Oreal, you know about Women in Science program of, of UNESCO. It will be lovely to collaborate now with Merck for the benefit of Africa. So thank you for the initiative. Thank you for getting us on board. Then I welcome very much uh, all African researchers. This is a fantastic opportunity to see you all with us, and I'm looking very much forward to having discussions with you. Now, let me say that uh, also Director General of UNESCO, Mrs. Bokova, is particularly and personally interested in the outcome of this meeting. This is because Africa and uh, science-based development are two priorities of UNESCO currently. You might know that the Secretary General of United Nations, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, organized one and a half year ago a scientific advisory board of eminent scientists that advise him on issues of development. It so happens that uh, UNESCO has been asked to serve as secretariat to this scientific executive board and the Secretariat is located in my division. 
in few weeks we will have a next board meeting in the presence of Mr. Ban Ki-moon in St. Petersburg where I am supposed to report on the outcome of this summit and to make sure that not only UNESCO but the entire UN will be on board supporting this initiative for Africa. Initiative which is absolutely necessary and is absolutely on time. Now the importance and role of health and life sciences sector and associated industries in socioeconomic development cannot be of course questions. questioned. First, discoveries, inventions and innovations from health and life sciences research allow individuals to have longer, better and productive life. In fact, we observed that during the last 50 years, uh, science, life sciences and medical sciences passed through a true explosion of, of knowledge. And uh, the lifespan of human beings enlarged tremendously. Second, the health and life science industry is uh, also a leading wealth creator. The pharmaceutical and biotech markets uh, run into over 600 billion US dollars annually, and global healthcare expenditures amount to trillions. So we are talking of the extremely important part of a general global market that we are discussing here. Third, the sector provides enormous employment opportunities globally. Now, all this is true but unfortunately, it is not yet fully true for Africa. Africa is lagging behind, and this is something we all have to, to work on to change. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa accounts for 11% of the global population, but bears 24% of the world's disease burden, while it commands less than 1% of global health expenditure. Now, this cannot continue like this further. Sub-Saharan Africa is said to have only 3% of the world's health workers, which of course is so low because it excludes the bigger portion of African professionals that continuously leave the continent in the form of brain drain. Of course, investing into um, health and biological research and infrastructure in Africa would also prevent this brain drain, hopefully. But uh, in this situation, it's no wonder that uh, the level of research and development um, uh, is indeed low when you look that uh, the outcome of scientific research is about 0.05% of global output. Now we know that a lot of talented African researchers actually are extremely productive and successful, but they do not work in Africa. Well, this is quite a grim uh, picture, but uh, excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, uh, the good news is that the situation in Africa has been changing. Africa has been moving on the right direction with the broader consolidation of peace and stability, paying good socioeconomic dividends. Uh, several indicators reflect this new path. These include, for instance, growth rates of about above 6% annually for most African countries in the past several years, bigger and improved uh, roles of the private sector in wealth creation, and the rise of large-scale uh, domestic firms. These positive trends are also visible in research communities, uh, and they are growing. Medical and life science research initiatives are to be found in many parts of Africa. But of course, they need to be reinforced and accelerated 
especially in building greater capacities by training and retaining more scientific uh, uh, researchers uh, through investment in first-rate medical research infrastructure uh, and creation of environment that promotes science. But possibly the most critical question is the role of African researchers in building effective institutions to address its health priorities. UNESCO, from uh, its inception, tries to work with Africa and help Africa uh, on all scales. About 10 years ago, Africa became a priority in UNESCO program. And we really try to help on different uh, platforms to, to create this new wave of development, science-based development in Africa. Uh, first attempt that is quite interesting for you to know is the trial of creating uh, centers of excellence in science, which we call category two centers because they do not belong directly to UNESCO. These are category one centers. We have some institutes like that. But category two are financed by the government and are run under UNESCO auspices uh, due to agreement that we sign with the government, obliging the government for steady financing of the staff and uh, running costs of the institution and helping also uh, achieving uh, uh, better uh, output in form of uh, external grants and uh, some additional money for research. This is quite a successful program. Uh, myself, I already was involved in creating several uh, such centers in Africa. One of them, which is now a, a leading, becoming a leading center in biotechnology in Africa, is the one we created five years ago at the University of Nsuka in Nigeria, which is the regional center of biotechnology and which is specifically targeting uh, um, tropical diseases. Now, besides these uh, centers of excellence that we create, there are many other initiatives that we try to put forward in Africa. You, you might have heard about um, uh, Equatorial Guinea Prize in Life Sciences, which is located at UNESCO. It's a relatively new prize. It has been created three years ago, but it is uh, a prize which is supposed to stimulate interest in life sciences in developing countries, especially in Africa. It amounts to uh, half a million dollars each year, a prize, which can be shared between three researchers. And we are having already the first set of very talented researchers in life sciences coming, among others, from Africa. And I appeal to all of you to to follow up development of this prize and to put forward uh, good candidates. Another thing is, uh, is Carlos Finlay Prize, which Ahmed Fami, my collaborator, is directly responsible for, and he will delightly uh, let you know more about this prize. Then we have, of course, something you, you, you know, which is Laurel UNESCO Prize for Women in Science and Fellowships. I am very honored to be for 14 years member of the jury of this prize, and uh, I also am responsible for, for collaboration with Laurel. And it's fantastic to see that with time, we are getting more and more fantastic African ladies being awarded a big prize, and this, uh, enormous number of talented youngsters, girls, because the price is specific, it targets women in science, but it, it does for the very good reason, because we are still lacking half of the population which is talented and, uh, and full of energy uh, in, in research. So we have to stimulate numbers of young women uh, 
into research in life and health sciences. Then, of course, um, we, we try also to promote uh, human capacity building. As you know, UNESCO and WHO were um, at the 2008 Global Ministerial Forum on Research for Health in Bamako, the main players. And we were also uh, mm, sponsoring the declaration which, which was finally uh, produced by Bamako, uh, which calls not only for institutional, but also capacity building in Africa. And here I must say this training and human capacity building is something very important for us. We have, for instance, a collaboration with IBRO, International Brain Research Organization. Uh, we created the network of um, brain sciences in Africa. And we have a special training program with IBRO, which is called Building Brains in Africa. There is another uh, with ICTP, uh, Institute of Theoretical Physics in, in Trieste, which belongs to UNESCO, which we call ALOP. This is uh, uh, a special training in optics and photonics for young researchers. So we try to stimulate uh, this human capacity building. This, of course, um, is uh, in line with what we always wanted to support and we are involved in, which is collaboration with African unions on the implementation of the Consolidated Plan of Action for Science and Technology earlier, and now STISA 2024, uh, when individual countries uh, are also uh, our partners uh, in formulation of national science and policy guidelines. So uh, African Union stimulates uh, capacity building, institutional and uh, human, but also is interested in science policy. And here we have several programs, especially a program called GOSPIN, which is a global observatory of science policy instruments. And the officer responsible for GOSPIN is again Ahmed Fami, whom you know. Who, who was co-organizing uh, this event. Uh, and we are very active in assessing science and technology state of art of African countries. The latest volume is on Rwanda, has been just published three days ago. And these are very interesting books that actually study and describe the state of art of science and technology needs of a given country and suggests to a country what to do to develop further on the path of, uh, uh, of this science-based development. UNESCO is also committed very much to uh, promote science journalism and we have special training for African journalists in science. Uh, then, of course, we have special initiatives like, for instance, International Years, International Year of Light, which was proposed by Ghana and which runs this year. And last year we had International Year of Crystallography, uh, which again was something extremely interesting because in Africa we were able to organize so-called open laboratories in collaboration with Brooker, a big producer of diffractometers. Brooker was offering diffractometers in certain labs in African countries to run trainings for students interested in crystallographic techniques. And this is, of course, a very difficult technique and costly. So majority of African countries do not have these facilities yet, and they use uh, facilities in Europe, US, Japan, and so on. But to train youngsters on how to use crystallography, which is a sine qua non element of modern science, because the structure that you study by crystallography is, a, is an identity card for any chemical compound that you produce, any pharmaceutical or uh, biological uh, uh, specimen that you are studying. 
So it's absolutely necessary that crystallography enters Africa very strongly, and we are proud that this uh, program of open laboratories with Brooker was so successful, and we continue, by the, by the way, this year. We also uh, create a, a light synchrotron center in Jordan called SESAME, which is supposed to serve also African countries. SESAME will be opened uh, next year by the end of 2016. And there is now a discussion in which we also participate on creating a new synchrotron in Africa for Africa. And together with European Union, UNESCO is preparing now a feasibility study on this new synchrotron, on where to locate it, how to construct it. And this will be, again, a jump forward in, uh, in the infrastructure available to Africa. So, in other words, not to speak too long, let me say, for me, it is clear that uh, Africa is awakening. It is a, a continent of hope and tremendous possibilities, full of talented people, which uh, needs our strong support to go forward. And this meeting, due to Merck, is a step forward, a very important step forward in this process. This is high time for all of us to join forces, and I'm really delighted seeing not only distinguished decision makers like Mrs. Ambassador and President-elect of Merck here, but mainly the youngsters, youngsters from Africa, this is our future and future of the continent. Thank you very much.